Barrett's chess piece is a lie. It doesn't exist. Nobody has it. It's not real. I got it! <laughs> I'm not even you joking! I'm not even you joking! Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Division video. Finally, after goodness knows how many runs through Lexington, I finally got Barrett's bulletproof chess piece. Which of course means it's now time for a video. In this video, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like, how it performs, speak about the kind of current known issues surrounding it, and just in general, give you guys a chance to take a look at it. Because I appreciate this thing is very, very difficult to come by. In fact, in the most recent state of the game, Hamish and Yannick shared some stats, and Lorraine Barrett, who is the boss of the Lexington Event Center, and of course the person that drops this item, has been killed 2.85 million times since patch 1.5 went live. So it's fair to say that people have been farming this pretty extensively and the drop rate is rather low. So if you guys haven't had a chance to get it, then hopefully this video will at least give you guys a chance to look at it. So if you do enjoy this, like would be super appreciated. If you have any questions, drop them down below. And also let me know if you guys have been successful getting this yourself. And if so, did you get a good roll on it? Anyway, before I dive into taking a look at the item itself, just as a super quick recap in case some of you guys have not been farming this, if you want to get this armor piece, it comes from one of three different locations. The main location is of course the Lexington Event Center mission. You have to do this mission in World Tier 5, and I'd recommend doing it on challenge mode for the best drop rates, but the armor piece drops from the final boss, who is Laurie Barrett. It won't drop from the post-mission reward, nor will it drop from any other enemies, it will just drop from her. So if you guys are farming this mission, it is just the items that she drops that you need to pay attention to. Alternatively, it can also drop from survival caches and proficiency caches. Proficiency is probably the other kind of most likely source, simply because if you're running Lexington, you're also going to be getting proficiency caches probably every sort of like two to three runs. So opening them is also another chance to get it. But of course, yes, if you're playing survival, you also have a chance for that. In fact, pretty much all the items have a chance of coming from survival caches. So that's a pretty good thing to go after. But anyway, with the other way, let's now take a look at the piece itself. So this is what it looks like. All these name gear pieces have their own kind of unique look to them. This has a white cross on the front, which you'll of course see on a lot of the Riker enemies. It has a gold colored and unique name. And for those of you guys that might have missed it, named gear pieces are basically a new addition that came in patch 1.5. There are six of them in total, one for each gear slot. They come from a variety of different sources and they are basically like the gear equivalent to named high-end weapons in that they have a unique talent that you cannot get anywhere else. And while some of them aren't especially exciting, some of them, like Barrett's Bulletproof Chess Piece, are pretty cool, so that is the reason that people are going after them. So, taking a look at the one that I got, this one actually dropped with a pretty decent roll. It rolled with firearms, it rolled with health, and I rolled up the other major attributes for armor, so I'm actually pretty happy with where this is at. But taking a look at the actual talent itself, Barrett's Bulletproof, this is split into three different conditions. Basically, the talent revolves around skill cooldowns, and depending on how many skills you have on cooldown affects the bonus that you get. So if you have no skills on cooldown, i.e. you haven't used any of your skills, then you get a 10% increase to your skill power. Now it's worth noting that as it currently exists in game, this is bugged. It works, but the UI doesn't show it up. So if you guys want to see it, what you should actually do is unequip the chest piece, put on something else randomly, and put the barracks bulletproof chest back on, and you will then see the skill power increase. So in this situation, I went from around 80k up to 90. So that is how you get to see it if you guys want to. Alternatively, if you have one skill on cooldown, i.e. you have used one skill and it's then ticking back up, you will then instead lose that first bonus, i.e. the 10% skill power increase, and instead that will be replaced with a 5% damage increase. These don't stack, so you won't suddenly get the skill power and the damage, you will only get one at a time. So at this point, if we then take a look at the firing range, you can of course see this is a damage I do on body shots and headshots, and if I then use a skill, I'm using a healing skill here so that it doesn't artificially inflate my damage, you can of course see that I get the 5% damage increase. However, the final part is that if I have two skills on cooldown, i.e. I've used both of my skills, then that damage increase is replaced with a 10% armor increase. And of course, you can see in here, if I go over to my character, drop down to survivability, this is me pre-skill cooldown. Don't worry about the numbers for now. Yes, I know the armor is low. I don't currently have armor in slot on all my gear pieces, so don't worry about that. But if I then go and use both of my skills and I go back to survivability, you can of course see that that stat has jumped up. So as a recap, you can only have one of these active at a time, but what's really cool about this gear piece is that it's pretty intelligently designed. It's designed to kind of complement the way that most people play the game. If you think about the way that you typically choose your skills, while not everyone does this, but I'd be willing to bet that a large chunk of you typically run with some sort of healing skill and another skill. In my case, I run with a healing skill and a flame turret because I have a firecrest build, but you might run with, say, heal and pulse, heal and seeker mine, heal and shield. 
Who knows, whatever it is, the point is that is the way that a lot of people run, just simply because you want to have something to keep you alive and you want to have something to deal damage. So in that respect, it's pretty cool. Because in my case, I pretty much always have my flame tower out so that I can, of course, gain the bonus from Firecrest. And of course, so that it can CC enemies, deal damage and whatnot. So if I have my flame tower out and I have Barrett's Bulletproof chest piece on, then I'm gaining the damage increase, which of course means if I'm in a situation where I'm behind cover and I'm pushing the enemy back and I'm dealing the damage, then I can actually benefit from that. Of course, on the flip side, if I have two skills on cooldown, then the chances are I have deployed my first skill, I then had to resort to using a heal because maybe I've been rushed by the enemy, my health is low, and in that situation, I might then either be hiding behind cover or retreating. So in that situation, having a 10% armor increase is really nice because if I am running away, that's of course going to keep me alive just a little bit longer and make it a little bit harder to kill me. And of course, third and final situation, if I have no skills on cooldown, chances are I'm most likely either out of combat or just kind of going into combat which means I can, of course, lead with a slightly higher skill power move and, of course, then go into the remainder. So, as mentioned, Chess Beast basically complements the way that most people play the game, but it also goes quite nicely with a lot of builds. As mentioned, Firecrest is a good one for me because you get a damage increase to targets that are on fire, hence why I run with a flame turret. That stacks with the damage increase from Barrett's Bulletproof, and, of course, if I then pair that with the MDR, which I also have, which also deals bonus damage to targets that have status effects applied, then you have a pretty nice combination. Is it a must-have item? Not necessarily. It's cool, yes, it's definitely something you should consider using if you get it. Should you go out of your way to farm Lexington an untold number of times? Well, that is entirely down to you. Yes, of course, there are other options. You could just throw on a reckless chess piece, or you could just run the usual kind of like three-piece, three-piece gear set, four-two, whatever you want to do. There are loads of options, and that's one of the nice things about the way the division is right now. There are so many different gear options, so you don't necessarily have to fall into one thing. I wouldn't necessarily say Barrett's Bulletproof Chest is the be-all and end-all that you simply have to have, but if you do have the chance to farm it and you do get it, then you can definitely get some use out of it. But for the time being, that is pretty much it. That was just a quick look at the chest piece. You guys will of course be seeing this again next week when I drop my Firecrest build, because this is actually part of my Firecrest build. But until then, thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions, drop them down below. Again, also let me know if you guys have got this yourself, and if so, what your role is. But take it easy, catch you next time. Peace out.